Hello, and welcome back to Music History at Educator.com. Well, congratulations. We've made it to the classical period. So we are getting a lot closer to modern day. We've gone hundreds and hundreds of years already. Um, first thing we're going to talk about in the classical period is opera, just like we did in the Baroque, because you are going to see that some major developments have happened and it's pretty important stuff and some pretty cool things too. So, yes, yay more opera. There you go. Funny cartoon about opera. Um, we can really, really easily kind of compartmentalize what happened in the classical period for opera. Opera seria versus opera buffa. It's really as simple as that. Think of it like a, a kind of a boxing match between the two. Opera seria, um, let's kind of review what was happening there. That's the serious opera. That's the one we talked about for the Baroque, towards the end of the Baroque, of course. Um, is there a serious text based on history or legendary tales? Melodramatic. It's the, that's the big showstopper. Uh, the, the, the scorned lover who does not win in the end in the, the like affair that is not allowed and there's uh, the Romeo and Juliet kind of atmosphere going on. Um, in absence of comic elements. Um, long. <laughs> Shall we just put it that way? They were long. Opera seria operas were long. That was the focus on the singer, the da capo aria, if you remember. I mentioned this before, but to go into it in, in, in more typical fashion, the singers made as much as 10 times the amount of money f than the composer of the opera. So the person who wrote the entire opera gets paid, let's say, $10. And the singer who just sings one part in the opera just for performances makes 100 and when you start multiplying that out, you see why these singers were the rock stars of their day. But the other thing to, to sort of note is what kind of happened at the uh, opera at this time. I, I mentioned that it was the entertainment of the day, but I didn't tell you what it was kind of all about. And that's, um, it was kind of a, a big drunken party. Um, the audience members would drink, play cards. They would, um, they are stories of... Um, people fornicating in the balconies, waiting for these arias. As soon as the diva um, got on stage and started to sing one of the arias, the entire atmosphere changed. That's what everybody came to see. And that's important to note because it sort of sets the stage for what the rest of the opera was, kind of filler material. Um, but as we mentioned just before, there's a lot of ornamentation. Uh, that's, you know, the improvising part of the Da Caporia. And the recitative furthered the plot. That was, once again, the kind of singing like this. And then you say it focuses on the singer. And singers made 10 times as much money as the composer audience, but typically drink play cards waiting for arias. Really quick presentation of the rest of the story, because if you have that aria given of tiny bit of text and it goes on for 10 minutes and all of a sudden you have a lot of text to say. 